Hi everyone, another week. It's Ryan and I'm back in the garage. So I've already had a busy week. Um, off camera, I've had a little tidy up, made some space, got back onto the scrambler um, and I've just been cleaning up the frame and uh, getting it ready for welding. So um, I'll show you that. And then, so that is literally just cleaned up, paint removed on the ends. I'm gonna reattach the seat, see if I can just tack that in place, remove the seat and then weld it out properly. So that's my initial plan. Um, not sure what to do next. I want to get this so it's actually a movable, rideable bike. For that, I'm going to need some foot pegs, foot rests, that I don't currently have. Um, and I need to attach the chain, which I don't know the pitch and length of the chain I need. So I need to do a bit of research on that. But I think if I can get foot rests, if I can get a chain sorted and I need to secure this sprocket properly because at the moment it's held on I think with about two bolts then I think it will move I'm not suggesting it's rideable but it will move so it might just do 100 yards or so um, I want to get it so it's a running riding bike and then the next thing I want to do is when I can sit on it and when it's running, I want to address the exhausts because I need them to be relatively high so they're not the lowest point on the bike when I'm in ruts. I don't think they can be here because if you know anything about going through a rut, that's about the first place that's actually going to hit. So these need to, I don't know, maybe cross over, maybe just turn around and come up higher. Not sure what to do with that yet, but okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get that sorted first, then we can move on. Okay. Right, my seat is attached and my welding is functional. <laughs> it ain't pretty. I'm very, very much still learning, but that is definitely going nowhere. I've actually picked the bike up on the bracket to make sure it doesn't move. Um, which allows me to move on to the seat loop because that is bolted and that's not going anywhere but it clearly flexes so i still need a loop a seat loop i need it to attach to the frame at the front it needs to sit in there so it actually supports the seat from underneath and it gives me somewhere to attach lights and registration plates to the back here so with that said i've just done some rough measurements I reckon I need it to be at least 55 centimeters long. I think I need the the width to be 15 centimeters. And I'm gonna go online and see if I can find that because I had a, a great idea of bending this. Um, of course I can't bend it, it's tube. If I, if I try and bend that, it's just gonna kink, isn't it? I don't have a pipe bender. Um, it's not gonna retain its form, it's not gonna retain its shape. Unless I want to invest in a pipe bender, I'm wasting my time. So I'm not going to waste my time on that. Um, okay, so I think I need that. My shopping list is currently um, a couple of foot rests. Um, I need a chain and I need a seat loop. So I'm going to go shopping and see if I can pick up some of those. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can find a way to sort of mock up what I want the exhaust to do. I'm not going to cut the metal i'm not going to do anything with that i don't have any piping but there must be a way of me mimicking what i want so i'm going to go and look around the house see what i can find and yes okay but it's beginning to look like a bike not from that close i have quite new but from back here somewhere look it's getting there and i I know I've had a lot of people giving me feedback. They feel the back end is completely wrong and the seat doesn't match and everything else. I get what people are saying, but you would not stare at that bike in the street and go, my God, it's ugly. At least not yet. Okay. Right. Let me push on. 
Well, before I get myself tied up on the exhaust, I needed to check the missing hardware that I need for these uh, sprockets. Uh, it's an M10, uh, that was obvious, but it's not standard thread, it's a, it's a fine thread. So it's an M10 times 1.25. At least that's what my gauges and best efforts have told me. So I'm gonna order up a set of those. Uh, also, for the seat, I need some hex. Um, they're M8s, um, but I only need them short, so I don't have anything. The only ones I could cut down are shouldered, so they're not going to work for me. Um, so I need some with the thread all the way up to the uh, up to the head, and I only need them about 20 mil long. Right, that's that worked out. So that's my shopping list written up. Um, let's get back to this exhaust. Okay. I'm back with my secret weapon. So, I managed to find a nice long cardboard tube that came out of some wrapping paper. And I'm gonna just see if I can just try playing around, putting it around a few roots. See if I can find a root which I think would work. Um, I don't know how this is gonna go. I've not seen anyone do this before, but I figured, well, it's a reasonable representation of an exhaust pipe. Right, I'm going to play with this, cut it up, stick it together, use some masking tape, uh, and let's work out if we can find a potential solution. God knows. So, there we are. Cardboard AD design. There is a potential route for my exhaust. Running down the side of the top frame, inside this leg, and then round and across the top of the case to join up at the front. So that is potentially the type of shape that I would need to create for the back end, um, which isn't massively complicated, I don't think. And then it needs to just run across the top of the case here. So it's relatively high off the ground, get, give me some more clearance, with a relatively tight curve at the front but that's no tighter than they run on the Honda XL. So I think that's possible. I just had a thought that maybe the seat frame where I was intending to run it would interfere, but actually it doesn't look. So I've now just put the bar in place where the seat frame's gonna go. So it attaches to the front there, runs up here. It's gonna be fixed up in there and the exhaust potentially still runs alongside it. Ah, oh, and the gap there is enough for exhaust sized piping to fit through. Can run down here, keep well away from the, from the carburetor and then run across the top of the engine over here. Do you know what? I think that's a runner. I think there is absolute potential in that. I don't know about the silencing of it. I don't know if I can get a really thin, like short silencer. Don't know, not sure about that yet. Give that some thought. I think, I think it's proven to me that it's possible. And that was all I needed to continue at this stage. Look, thank you very much. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm clearly learning. I'm a total amateur, but I'm giving it a go and I think I'm making some slow progress. So uh, thank you very much for your support. Stay safe, everyone. See you next week.